All right, this is a recap of day two of the Niagara Force certification training. And uh, I'm a little late getting this video out only because today the trainer decided to start us out at seven this morning. So had to get here a little bit earlier and kind of cut it close. So I wanted to make sure I got into the class on time. And uh, so we did. However, the trainer showed up a little late. That's okay, Kevin, got an eye on you. Uh, I've made special friends with Kevin already since we're in day three, but I'm going to recap day two, but me and Kevin are becoming special friends. Uh, I'm sure he loves to hate me, but uh, we're, we're both learning some things in there, and uh, it's fun. And uh, so recapping day two. Uh, day two, I think, is starting to highlight uh, some things that I've heard before um, about people wanting to get into Niagara Force certification training classes based on whatever manufacturer uh, they are aligned with. So for instance, um, I work with Distech Controls, so it was kind of good that I got into a class that actually was per, um, put on by Distech Controls, therefore the other controllers other than the Jace is actually a Distech Controls brand controller. Now that makes it great for me, but I think what I am realizing is that we've spent so much time, and even in day two, on working with the Distech controller and working with GFX and the programming that I think somebody that was using a different manufacturer um, of controls would probably feel a little bit out of place because there's a lot, especially since Distech controls uses uh, GFX to program their controllers and not actually programming the controllers in Niagara wire sheets. So I think it's really important that if you are wanting to go through Niagara Force certification, that you use the brand of controls that you're going to use on a daily basis. I think it's only going to help you, and especially uh, from a business owner or supervisor level, if you're looking to send your technicians to training, definitely wait for the training or look for a different location uh, to where they can actually get the training with the controls that they're going to be working with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it, it, it's just definitely going to help you out. Only in extreme cases would I recommend having to go to using a different controller because it's just going to be a learning curve. Um, so that being said, um, this morning dealt a lot with still having to build the controllers in GFX inside the manufacturer's uh, programming to get the setup so that we can actually use it inside the Jace. So this morning was a little bit more of that. Uh, however, in the afternoon yesterday, we got into one thing that I still haven't been able to wrap my head around, which is data tags. Now, this is a required thing for Niagara 4. They have to talk about data tags. Uh, this is just something that um, is required by the course. However, going into it, the data tags aren't like already set up. You're creating them. And I think for someone trying to learn what they are and how to use them, you need to have an existing setup, like an, uh, an example building or facility that utilizes the tags. That way you could actually do some searches on them or pull up some screens that are showing the tags and then you can actually see, oh, I can see how to use those. I can see what kind of information can be shown in the uses of, of grouping those tags. Right now, going through the course, we're creating these tags but not really knowing why or how it all comes together. Uh, now, I've been assured by Kevin that later on in the training, we're actually going to figure out um, you know, how to use those in hierarchical, let me make sure I use that word right, hierarchical uh, views. So that's going to be coming later this week, so I'm hopeful that I'll get my head around it. So that was pretty much the afternoon talking about data tags and histories. Uh, that's usually used by Nat, Niagara to group different points and um, components to the systems in a way to where you can search it and be able to view it a little bit easier. Uh, so that is the way that Niagara does that. And uh, we did touch on some Project Haystack, which you can look at projecthaystack.org, which is kind of like an open source of kind of culminating all the different tags for all different IoT devices, and they all use common tags. And that, of course, would be great globally that we utilize the same tags, that no matter what device or software you use, we all use the same kind of tags. That way, when you're searching for HVAC, it would pull up all the different things that people are utilizing with HVAC tag. So essentially, that was the end of the afternoon, and we're already in day three, so uh, at that point, like I said, I think the biggest, uh, biggest thing that's coming into mind after two days of being through uh, N4 training is that if you're new or you're old, try to go through a certification training using the manufactured controls that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's only going to help you out. Um, so that is the recap for day two. I'm in the middle of day three and uh, going to go back and enjoy dessert. And I will catch you tomorrow in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe on the YouTube channel. You can just YouTube The Controls Freak. It'll pop right up. Take care and we'll see you later.